Welcome to Smart Living Training, IBUS and Module Addressing. In this module, we're going to have a look at the data bus configuration and the module address settings. So first of all, looking at the data bus configuration and wiring. The data bus is a four wire proprietary data bus that has plus and minus 12 volts and two data lines. All modules that need to be connected to the system, keypads, expander modules, GSM modules, simply connect to this four wire data bus. The data bus is a four wire proprietary data bus, which is not based on RS-485. One of the benefits to this is there are no end of line terminations to worry about, and the system can be daisy chained, star wired, or a combination of any. Shielded data cable is recommended for best system performance, but the system will operate over short distances on 4-core or Cat5 cable. An adjustable board rate allows the data bus to be adjusted for best performance on large jobs. The speed of the data bus will allow for longer cable runs at a slower speed, but doesn't support voice function. At the faster rate, it offers much better voice quality, but with shorter cable runs. By default, the standard rate should be fine for most jobs. Data bus distance is dependent on both speed and how many devices are being powered from the system. To increase data bus distance, simply decrease the speed of the data bus or power devices from an auxiliary power supply. In cases where we need to increase the data bus distance, we can install a data bus isolator. The data bus isolator will both increase distance and isolate both sides of the data bus, as well as regenerating power and boosting it for long cable distances. It is possible to install up to five data bus isolators in cascade between any device and the main panel. A panel will support a total of 10 data bus isolators. The bus isolator modules both increase distance and isolate data bus branches. This can be useful when running cables between buildings to protect the age shorts, bringing down the entire system. The onboard power booster regenerates power for long cable runs, and the module is also monitored by the system and can provide voltage feedback to the software. An example of how data bus isolators can isolate the modules on the bus. Data cabling can be managed in any way the installer chooses. Cables can simply be connected directly to the main port on board, or using a device such as our 106012 WIGAN interface, parallel terminals can be used to connect multiple cables to the single input. Combinations of modules and data bus isolators can be used to expand the system further. Now we're going to have a look at configuring data bus module addresses. Each module on the data bus needs a unique address within the module type. Keypads are one type, the flex module is another type, prox readers are another type, and this includes the transceiver, which is considered a wireless proximity reader, and sounders are the final type. Programming keypad addresses is done by placing the system first into maintenance mode. For the LCD keypad, press the one and three buttons together, and then release. Use the up and down arrows to then change the keypad address. For touchscreens, press the settings button, followed by the alien button, and then you will find the keypad address and the prox reader address setting at the top of the list. Some basic troubleshooting for keypads. If the display is blank, first check the power and data connections. If there is more than one keypad on the system, it probably means that more than one keypad is set to the same address. Place the system into service mode and go to each keypad and set the address. If the address setting is not listed in the touchscreen, it means that the system is not in service mode. The Flex 5 module is addressed using the onboard DIB switches, using switches 8 to 3, with 1 and 2 not being used. As is depicted by the diagram below, each switch corresponds to a binary digit. Combinations of these switches add up to our address. It should be noted that with all switches off and a value of zero, this equals module number one. This means that for any value, we need to add one to get the module's address. In the example, we have switches three, four, seven, and eight switched on. 
This is 32 plus 16 plus 2 plus 1 equals 51. We then have to add 1 to the total to get the address of 52. The radio transceiver is addressed in the same way. The only thing to keep in mind is that the transceiver is considered to the system to be a wireless prox reader. This means that the transceiver needs to be clear of all other prox readers on the system, including the inbuilt prox reader in touchscreens. It should also be noted that the radio transceiver should always start from address 2 onwards, leaving address 1 free for the keypad prox reader. Here are some examples of some address settings. At the very top, we have all switches off, which is zero. If we add one to this, this gives us an address of one. Next, we have switches four, five, and six on, which give us a total of 28. If we add one to this, we have our address setting of 29. Finally, we have switches three, six, seven, and eight on, which give us a total of 39, and adding one to this gives us an address of 40. Prox readers can be addressed from keypad or software. Changing prox reader address requires an EM format key or card. This does not have to be programmed into the system, but needs to be read by the card reader. To change the address of card readers using a keypad, first enter into install program mode, go to readers, go to program address, the current address will be displayed on each reader. Present a card or fob to the reader to cycle through the address options. Refer to the address setting table on the left, which is also included with your Smart Living panel. Once all readers have been addressed, simply exit reader address mode from the keypad. To enter address setting mode from the software, first put the panel into maintenance mode. Then select the Prox Reader Programming tab and select the button Prox Reader Address Configuration. Perform the same process of badging a card to change the Prox Reader address, and you can select which address you would like a reader to be set to, which will then show the LED pattern to look out for. This concludes the training module.